Hey everybody, welcome back. This is DM Dave with World Building with DM Dave. Um, if you've been following along, you know that I have been taking some maps um, from Dyson Logos' collection, which you can get at DysonLogos.blog. I've uh, adjusted them. I first traced them using Dungeon Draft from DungeonDraft.net. I uploaded them into Photoshop, did some post-production edits, and now I've put them into Roll20, which is at Roll20.net. Created a new game sized both images and this time we're going to do some dynamic lighting so let's jump in oh and if you would before we get started be sure to like this video and be sure to subscribe all right so we've got our images in here um we've got our two morlock layers let's go to the first one here this is the main entrance and you can see we got everything here but there's no dynamic lighting in place yet which means there's no like if the players are playing they can walk through walls kind of do whatever they want to do we want to turn on dynamic lighting because one, it'll help block um, people from moving to places you don't want them to be, and then two, we can do some really cool lighting effects um, in there and kind of make it a dark and scary place. All right, so over here on your toolbar, go down to dynamic lighting and go ahead and click that. And then what it does is puts us on the dynamic lighting layer. So anything we draw here won't be seen by the players, but it will block any potential light sources and lines of sight that they have. We are going to grab our polygon tool here. And then what this does is it gives us the ability to draw polygons. It defaults to black, but I want to get a nice bright color that stands out. So I tend to go with kind of this purplish pink color. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start um, tracing our image with our dynamic line generator, which is pretty simple to do. Okay. So let's see here. We are going to start right at the beginning here. I'm going to zoom in as best I can. And then I'm just going to start drawing dynamic lines around kind of in the middle of these edges here. And it's pretty, when you have a, um, a like a layer like that, it's pretty, or uh, what was I saying? When you have natural caverns, you don't really have to be nice and tidy. Once we get to sort of the nicer elements, I'm going to show you how to do that in kind of a quicker way. Uh, what the polygon tool will do is it'll continue to draw one continuous line, and it pretty much won't stop until you end it using the um, right click. Right now I'm just doing nothing but left clicks to draw it, but once I hit the right click, it'll end. So let's go ahead and do that now to kind of save our spot. And you can see it kind of goes uh, a duller version of it. That means that the lights are on and then that line is no longer in progress. Then when I go to start, instead of starting right here, I want to do an overlap just a little bit so there's no gaps when we go to um, turn the lights on. Because even the tiniest gap can have light shine through it, which can look kind of... Um, amateurish. So to always try to overlap your old lines, especially when you're doing doors and stuff too, which you'll end up removing while playing the game, which I'll kind of show you later on. But this is uh, it's pretty simple. You just keep going around. Uh, you've got different size options too, so if I wanted to do some really chunky walls, I could up it to large. I tend to keep it on regular, just because I uh, just kind of fits. I guess I could go thinner if I really wanted to, but that's a lot of effort. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to keep on drawing our little lines here. What I might do is um, fade out from here using the powers of post-production <laughs> and come back in with this all completed because unless I don't think you guys want to watch me do this whole thing oh this area fades off into black so I'm just going to leave a little bit of edge here so that looks pretty cool that's just saying hey this goes down into the dark all right I'm going to fade out and fade back in with a little bit more and then when I come back we are going to pick up um where we started oh real quick before I go I keep finding cool stuff um this member goes down we wanted to put a secret door here so we're gonna actually draw the line there because we're gonna put a door there which we can remove so you're gonna want to keep going down to here hit shift let's draw a nice line and go there oh 
Okay, so now that I'm doing more of these natural rooms, I want them to get it perfectly to the grid. So you can see the grid kind of lines up nice like that, and the wall itself is centered around the grid lines. Uh, Dungeon Draft works really well with um, kind of like understanding how VTTs work. So what I'm going to do is when I go to here now, I'm going to hold my shift key and then I'm going to click. Boom. It's going to go exactly from point to point. And you can just kind of quickly go through the lines then. You don't have to like try to get it perfect. And that's all I got to do for that. All right. It looks like I've got most of my outline done here. So I need to do the interior lines now, but you can see uh, it's starting to really come together. One thing you really want to be cognizant of are kind of these small passages here. Um, tokens might not be able to fit through them. Um, you can drag and drop, but um, when making when doing dynamic lighting, it's a really good idea to like test it with a token to see if you can move through areas. I'm gonna guess they can probably fit through, but if not, they can always drag and drop, and it kind of will create a um, a unique situation which you can address in the game. Like maybe they need to do an athletics check or something. All right, let's see where we are so far. I'm gonna zoom out, get a good look. Looks like we've got all of our main lines done. Awesome. All right, next we're gonna stick in our doors which will be pretty easy. All right, so remember we got a secret door here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch my palette to a green. That way I can know visually when looking at this map exactly where a door is. I'm gonna trace over these pink lines a little bit so there's no gaps. And that's it. Now we got a door. That way when we wanna remove the door out of the way, all we gotta do is select move and get it out of the way like that. And we got a few more doors over here. Oops, missed a little nugget here. So let me do this little natural column real quick, then we'll put in our other doors. Those will be a little bit easier to draw too because they're on a kind of a man-made, more square areas. All right, let's see here. All right, so to do our doors, again, we're gonna go to this bright green color, get a nice contrast with the um, yellows. Uh, I make really big doors, so you can make them really easy to move, plus they're simple to draw. So I start off a little back behind and go doot, 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 like that. Same thing with this one here. I'm going to go boop, boop, boop. And then I'm going to take my select move, click it, right click it, go to, to back, and it tucks it in, makes it nice and clean. Do the same thing with this one. There you go. There's my doors. And this is our whole first level right here. We've got everything we need. Do one last check to make sure we didn't miss anything. I could draw a secondary door here. You know what? I might just do that if I want to have a secret door going both ways. So let's go ahead and do that. That way, if they're coming the other direction, they have to find the door too. There we go. And we'll tuck both of these doors in. There we go. So when the characters are moving down here, they won't be able to see that there's a secret door there. I think I got one more door up here, the entryway with the ladder. Yep. So let's draw in this one real quick. Make sure that they can at least see a little bit of the door. So that's really important. Okay. And we're going to tuck this guy in too. Maybe get it so it's just right. Perfect. Cool. You know what? I'm not happy with that. I'm just going to delete it and go back and try again. I want it to look good. Mostly you want to try to get your lines with dynamic lighting good because you don't want to give away any secrets that there might be, especially door secret doors and stuff like that, which you want to keep hidden from your players. That looks pretty good. All right. Scroll out, check it out. We've got all this. This looks good, looks good. Got all my doors covered. The only thing I would do is light sources. I think the only light source I want to add is going to be right here in the ladder. So it's going to be um, where the players come into the dungeon. It's kind of like light shining from outside. So 
The way to add a light source is pretty easy. I've already got it uploaded in here, but all you really need is um, like just a little circle, which you can get. So I've got just a plain yellow circle here, and I'm going to place it right on the map. Because it's on the dynamic lighting layer, uh, the players won't be able to see it. So we just go bloop like this. Now it's going to snap to the vertices, but if you hit your um, Option key on a Mac, which I think is your Alt key on a uh, thing, you can place it wherever you want. Once you've got the light source where you want it to go, double click on it, go to your dynamic lighting layer. We're going to say this guy is going to emit bright light for uh, 10 feet, low light for an additional 10 feet, and then I can adjust the brightness here and there if I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted directional light, I could do that. So we've got a total light of 20 feet. Let's see, we've got some advanced settings. I can multiply the light, but let's save our settings here. We'll go back to our object layer. You see we can't see it anywhere. Now a good idea is when you've done dynamic lighting like this, to try to test it out. So I'm going to drop my little lightning child pog here. We're going to make it so that he can see. Um, I'm not going to give him any kind of night vision yet, though. Once you've got your pog in place, hit Command L, and now you can see everything that he can see. Oh wait, we've also got um, global light on, so let's turn global light off. All right, so we're going to turn off daylight mode, and now we should only see the light that he sees. Okay, and you can see as I'm moving around. Yeah, it's a pretty tough, it's a pretty tight little corner there can't move there so but once he goes over here for example there's no light source so he's just in the dark like oh no <laughs> and then we would do that to test it uh, another good thing we can do let's go ahead and give him some night vision so we'll turn on his night vision we'll give him 60 feet of night vision and that's I think all we really need hit control L again and you can see now exactly what he's seeing yeah, as I suspected, it's pretty hard to get through. This is a little bit, a little bit too chunky. We made this a little bit too narrow. That's fine. It it creates a interesting situation for DMing. <laughs> a little bit annoying, but uh, the passages were pretty small. And then if I went down there, that would take me downstairs. We got a little cliff there. Let's zoom out. Let's see if we can see the end of his uh, light spectrum. Let's shrink it a little bit too. What's cool is you can change the color. So there we go. That's kind of cool. You can see how it's like fading off in the background there. Let's look at some of the other stuff. I right, know that sharpens. It's pretty weird. I like the dimming. Let's keep it the dimming. If I wanted to change the color, I could do that too. So we could put it on like a, do like a purple effect. Ooh, look at my night vision now. That's pretty cool, huh? But I think just the maybe a gray would be kind of cool. Uh, me. What about yeah, orange? <laughs> so yeah, you can kind of play with it and do like different colors and stuff. Um, I think it's kind of goofy, but it's good for helping you uh, differentiate the different colors. Um, the tight passages is not my favorite thing. Like, I might go back and change something. Like, oh, well, I can get through there. Okay, just through there. That's a little tough. Oh, and then I can't get... <laughs> um, that's fine. Yeah, a little bit tough to move around. That's okay. It'll be, it'll be super claustrophobic. That's it. That's basically how you do dynamic lighting on a layer. Um, I probably won't do um, a video of me doing it on the other one, so I'll probably get that done real quick and uh, come back to you. But yeah, thanks so much for watching this one. We've got dynamic lighting all set. Next, we'll probably start adding uh, some area numbers and start planning out what's going to be in this particular dungeon so we can get ready for running it with um, our players. Anyways, thanks so much. Be sure to like this video and subscribe. Uh, check me out at patreon.com forward slash DMDave, and I will see you next time with World Building with DMDave.